So here is actually one of the very first verses that opened up my eyes to see that once saved, always saved is in fact a false doctrine. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for salvation. Thank you for your grace, which we do not deserve. And thank you for your explanation from your perfectly preserved word in English, the King James Bible. I pray that today's video will be edifying and a blessing to those listening. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, so your will may be done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. The Word of God says in Acts chapter 10, verse 43, to give him all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. A saved believer is forgiven of his or her sins based on the record of God's Word. However, there are other passages that seem to contradict Acts 10 verse 43. Well, that is of course if you fail to rightly divide the word of truth. Since many people, including here on YouTube, do not adhere to this command, written in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 in the King James Version of the Bible, it is easy to find doctrine by wrongly dividing God's word, which leads to taking a passage out of context, isolating the passage, giving the passage a totally different meaning. Those are three errors before even getting to what the Word of God actually says. Now the passage in question for today's video is Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And it's saying that if you don't forgive, then your father, God, will not forgive you of your trespasses. What is interesting and crucial to understand is that from verses 1 to 15 in Matthew chapter 6, the word father appears a total of eight times. Look at verse 1, for example. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. And why is that? Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly, but thou wilt not pray it. Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall, what? Reward thee openly. So right off the bat, we read the context of Matthew 6. These verses speak of a reward. A believer saved by grace through faith knows salvation is not a reward, rather it is the gift of God. And that means this passage in Matthew 6 does not talk about salvation. Continue in verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven. Again, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And of course, verses 14 and 15 use the word Father as well. What this passage shows is the relationship between a believer and the Father. Again, the word Father shows up eight times in Matthew 6 from verses 1 to 15, so keep that in mind. So what many will try to do next is to try to say, well, this isn't talking about forgiveness in the sense of forgiveness of our sins, but it's only talking about a relational type of forgiveness so that the relationship can be restored. But no one would ever read this passage and think that Jesus was talking only about relational forgiveness here. And in fact, nowhere in the passage or even in scripture does it even hint that this is only talking about a relational type of forgiveness. This is a perfect example of reading into a passage something that just isn't there. So this man says that Matthew 6 verses 14 and 15 is not just about relational forgiveness, insinuating that this passage is about more, i.e. a requirement for salvation, either to be saved or to stay saved, which he's not clear of. What is clear is that he thinks this is about salvation because the title of this original video was about destroying one saved, always saved in five minutes, which proves that this man totally misunderstood the clear context of this passage. So look what happened. This man wrongly divided God's word, took the passage out of context, isolated the passage, making the passage about salvation 
which is God's gift, when the passage clearly talks about a reward. He then doubles down by saying nowhere in this passage, even in scripture, does this relate to only relational forgiveness. Nowhere in the passage or even in scripture does it even hint that this is only talking about a relational type of forgiveness. First of all, he needs to prove his claim from scripture, which he doesn't do in this video. And in a minute, we will read some passages that totally destroy his claim and proves that believers are in fact children of the Most High. Secondly, he needs to prove from this passage that this isn't just about relational forgiveness, i.e. prove that the passage says that forgiving one another is a requirement to get saved or stay saved, which he doesn't provide either because this passage simply is not about salvation. So when you give someone this verse, ask them whose father is Jesus referring to here? They will then have no choice but to answer God because nearly every single translation out there capitalizes the word Father to make clear that this is talking about God the Father. So this passage indeed is speaking of God the Father in the context of him dealing with saved believers, people who are already forgiven. How so? Because the unforgiven or unsafe cannot claim God as their Father. We read in the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become, watch this, sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Compare that with the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Again, ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. But no one would ever read this passage and think that Jesus was talking only about relational forgiveness here. And in fact, nowhere in the passage or even in scripture does it even hint that this is only talking about a relational type of forgiveness. This is a perfect example of reading into a passage something that just isn't there. Ironically, this guy himself makes the mistake of reading something into the text that isn't there. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Nowhere in the passage in question or surrounding Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15, does forgiveness to others serve as a requirement for salvation, either to be saved or to stay saved. In this passage, Jesus Christ addresses believers, meaning sons of God, children of God, who are already forgiven, telling them how the Most High deals with believers like us according to how we deal with others. This means that if you are a child of God, as a saved believer is, who has been forgiven of all his or her trespasses, if you are impatient or ungracious towards others, if you do not show mercy towards others or do not forgive others, can you expect our Heavenly Father to be gracious with you or to be merciful to you when you make a mistake? Of course, not. You can expect our Father to deal with you accordingly. Nowhere in the passage or even in scripture does it even hint that this is only talking about a relational type of forgiveness. Nowhere in the passage or even in scripture does it even hint that this is only talking about a relational type of forgiveness. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Now, none of us is perfect. We've all made mistakes. We are more than capable of making mistakes even after the moment we became a son or daughter of the Most High. And as such, our Father deals with us accordingly. Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 explains how our dealing with others is directly related to how our Heavenly Father deals with us. And when it comes to the topic of forgiveness, the Lord Jesus Christ told Peter the following in Matthew chapter 18. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but 
until 70 times 7. So this is Jesus Christ speaking to his beloved disciple Peter, telling him to be forgiving to others as God has been forgiving to Simon. The lesson Christ shares is universally applicable to us brethren as well. Matthew chapter 18 verses 23 to 35 is a further underlining of how to treat others when it comes to the topic of forgiveness, which again does not pertain to salvation, rather how to behave towards others because that directly relates to how our Father in heaven deals with us. So here is actually one of the very first verses that opened up my eyes to see that once saved, always saved is in fact a false doctrine. It's Matthew 6, 15. Jesus says, But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And so again, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15 is not speaking to unbelievers or the unsaved. Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15 is not about how to get saved or stay saved. That forgiveness of others is some sort of requirement for salvation because that is nowhere to be found in the passage. Rather, those that have been saved, the children of God, to reciprocate that forgiveness to others the same way our Father in heaven has been forgiven to us believers. Acts chapter 13, verses 38 and 39. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, the Word of God says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now we receive the forgiveness of sins in the context of salvation by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. I hope this video was of value to you and edifying. I pray that the gentleman in question may repent and return to the Lord and read the Word of God as is. And I pray, brethren, that you will continue to seek the Lord through His Word and through prayer, and that He may reveal unto you the understanding of passages such as Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's video, the inspiration that you have given me through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you will bless the listener in whatever they may be in their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, so your will may be done. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray, amen.